Yeah, I love 24 hour clock. Yo. That's what I want to hear. Yo. Nice, nice, nice. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> we got a forecast this week. Four forecast square. A forecast. I enjoyed hey, that game. Hey. Thanks for joining us. Joining us. How, how you been? Oh, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh. Oh, no. It's out of reach. The Morbius Cup. I was going to show it off on the video. Oh, well. Oh, no. Now, how will we know you watched Morbius? We've been waiting I on didn't that watch Morbius. I just got Wait, the he cup. Didn't? He just no. got the cup. That's it. Yeah. Movie theater. I knew they would want to get rid of them. And I was like, hey, I'm that sucker. Here's some more dollars. So. Want to get rid of them. However, you did tell us you had to pay a surcharge. Yeah, two extra bucks, but it, you know, priceless, really, yeah. long term. Mm -hmm. I was hoping like, Leto's this... face would be on it, but oh well. Is it not? What? No, what it's just this kind cup of is the... a ripoff, man. It's just the font and it's kind of glowy. But that is actually... the glowing. The glowing's all right. The kind I mean, of... from here Sheen. over, kind of the bad webcam. That could be an Avatar two cup for all I know. You're right. Oh. It's true. <laughs> Although I'd hope that would have Sam Worthington on it, but we'll find out when that comes I mean, out. Maybe. Yeah, no, that's true. But you know, Did two that bucks. You were drop like, yet? no. I've been seeing images so. of something, but I am yeah, assuming I it's like images. I can't tell if that's just people messing around with Photoshop, or if that's just from the first movie. And it's been so long, I don't remember. From what that's I understand, CinemaCon happened. They did show footage, but you're not allowed to capture any of the footage. But they and they so they released the name of it and a few stills. Okay. Why so... are they being so protective about Avatar? I like mean, it's gonna be like, like it's gonna be a flop, right? Like I'm not crazy for thinking this. So. It's gonna be a flop, right? I really hope I so. don't know. I it's it Cameron does this every time. It's been enough years, like it's it's probably gonna make two billion dollars. <laughs> like <that first laughs> like yeah. How long did Avatar One hold the record for for like most until like, revenue? endgame? Yeah, that's right. Like, Until Endgame barely squeaked past it with a re-release. So yeah. yeah, and Avatar One is getting a re-release in September, so it's probably going to take it back. Oh, oh my man. god, that that mech pulls out a knife. So maybe I'll go see it again. <laughs> but <laughs> Obtainium. Oh, oh don't yeah, it. Giovanna, Obtainium. Giovanni oh. Rubisi says that. That's true. No, nope. real thing that happens. Anyway, um, John, anything Morbius related going on in your life? <laughs> can't really say that there is okay. it's fine how about you paul unfortunately no no but you have a sick cat i'm sorry to hear that i do not have a sick cat no then i'm i'm well, happy to hear that i'm very happy to hear that thanks does anyone Regular have a sick scheduled cat? yeah just check no. up yeah exactly have a no cat bear's okay up. thank you <laughs> too many snacks all at once makes him kind of frantic and he runs around but that's not that's not his fault that's me i mean that's that happens to me too. That's yeah, just like, yeah. <laughs> too much liver or whatever. Just life. Oh, it's definitely the liver that does that to Sean. Lathan, you saw the unbearable weight of massive talent. I did. Starring uh, Nicholas Kim Coppola, I think his name was. Mm. He was really good in it. Uh, Nick Cage was okay in it, uh, but his his counterpart, Nikki, was was fantastic. Uh, there's there's sort of a golem speaking thing with him. Right. It's it's yep. it's pretty fun. Pedro Pascal is good. Uh, I guess, yeah, I, I liked it. It's it's a very, like, vain movie, maybe. <laughs> but that's fun. That's fine. He's, like, celebrating his own the, myth and mythology. I loved the relationship they both had. Like, the bromance there. Yeah. Fun and infectious. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like a, he meets his own super fan, and then they go yeah. on a weird cartel-related adventure. Um, while trying to just make a movie, they just want to get Nick Cage back, not that he ever went anywhere. And uh, right. they make some amazing callbacks to stuff I've forgotten about, like guarding Tess is like a key thing they talk about. So this movie with Shirley MacLaine from like 93 okay. I didn't that I saw one on that. time. It's that bodyguard movie that like Pedro's character talks about how it like was this bonding movie between him and his oh, dad. OK, yeah, it's yeah. just and they show it's they show some of it in the movie. Yeah. Cage is reminding himself what it was all about. But yeah. Very meta, very silly, but in a in a fun way. My only like quibble with it is I like the CIA characters and they kind of just throw them away. Like they don't even get to participate in the final moments, like the final act, which seems yeah. a little weird. But it, it, yeah. they are just they they're kind of just like a jumping off point to get him to like into the real plot. And then they're just like, let's forget about these guys. 
Yeah. And they had some fun jokes, like Crudes 2. A lot of enthusiasm for that movie, <laughs> which was, was funny here. I, I like when he's like, yeah, that, I, was, I did that with Emma Stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. When he meets Tiffany Haddish at the airport, she's like, oh, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for yeah. enjoying it. I'm I glad you and your niece gag. liked it. I thought the wall gag was pretty funny. Wall gag? Went, Is that the one from the trailer? Where he's like, they're like acting out and he's like, I'm, I'm not going to leave you behind. Oh, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yes. You know, we can okay. just walk around. I think that's yeah. that's right out of the trailer. I didn't. I'm glad that. I didn't see that trailer, I guess, because, yeah, that moment completely played. It's just like, why is this so dramatic? <laughs> but then <laughs> yeah. that was like the best part of it. Yeah. So well, I, I enjoyed his alternate persona stuff. Like when he gets to talk to himself, that was probably my favorite stuff. But yeah. Which yeah, I. Yeah, no, that's true. When he says, like, Nick freaking Cage, like, that's just a great moment, for sure. <laughs> he holds that note for a long time. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, so there's a Nicolas Cage movie, like, in theaters that people can watch. Me, me and my friend have gotten used to, like, bad movies on DVD from, like, Walmart dump in uh, that he's been putting out the last five, six years. But seeing him on the big screen again was fun. I mean, he, he I, I watched Wally's Wonderland. I'm going to say that was great. I'm, yep. I would have watched that in theaters. Yeah. So. Oh, I saw that at home. I kind of, yeah, specialty theaters aside, I suppose. But yeah, yeah. like I saw Prisoners of the Ghostland, but that yeah. wasn't amazing. No, <laughs> that was still. not amazing. No, no. <laughs> but he does shout, I'm radioactive at one point. Oh, yeah. So not all bad. No, he had some bad. fun moments in that, too. But this was this is more concentrated good energy. So, yes. yes. Yep. John, did you watch that recently? Uh, Yeah, like Tuesday. Nice. What did you think of that? I know Paul's a big fan. That was incredibly entertaining. Yeah. What a, what a fun time that was. Nick is definitely the best part of that movie. And honestly, they didn't even have to put in the rest of the plot. They could have just had it be him doing that for the entire time frame, and I would have been just as happy. I couldn't tell you how many like other people are in it except the cop. Like, I don't know how many teenagers there were or other characters. In that thing. Uh, Four teenagers and then the actual one that matters uh okay because then the two go in the room and fuck because they're idiots and they have to buy <laughs> horror teens. plot Classic mandate horror movie yep yeah one hides and it gets betrayed and the other gets like sonia like knee flip from mortal Kombat to death <laughs> basically okay i mean i haven't seen this one yet so don't spoil this for me oh sorry <laughs> oh i thought you already had sorry no it's on the list the list is long he that man works yep yeah, yeah, that's true. I will tell you right now. Uh, it was hilarious. It's a definitely it's a dark comedy. It's a black comedy. There's that's sure. the best way to describe that movie. It was, but it was exactly what me and my buddy G wanted. We watched it, laughed our asses off the entire time. Nick Cage was the best part of that movie. But uh, yeah, no, it was great. Nice. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, we could probably just like end the podcast there. As far as yeah, I'm I mean, I'm yeah, I mean, important in. stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Could also talk about some video games, I guess. Ugh. Right. Down perspective. No, I'm I'm excited about some of these video games. <laughs> 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 uh, no, that's, I'm I'm glad to hear that, uh, because I'm Sean Booker. I'm Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. And I'm Nathan Rohr. Let's let's start with you, Nathan. What have you been playing? All right. Well, uh enter the matrix i'm I'm sure like all of us got nice. super psyched about the matrix again after that sick sequel in december i did see it yeah <laughs> yeah i saw it um, time. i know a lot of people didn't like it but it made me like realize i didn't have it and uh okay. go back i love that it's canon with a big budget movie because it's such a janky game <laughs> like it's it's really buggy rushed to be put out but it's that's that happened that happened in the matrix universe this, this right, it's, story it's, it goes alongside two right yeah it goes alongside yeah. reloaded and there's kind of the other half of some scenes that intersect here and there uh i enjoy that game i can't say anyone who doesn't really have nostalgia for the matrix should ever go back and look at it it's pretty bad i remember but... liking this when it came out but uh, mm -hmm. yeah most people did but i also yeah like it, it's got some weird third per third person jank from like that era like the 2002 3d game era yeah mm -hmm. i haven't revisited it so i could definitely some pretty terrible <laughs> checkpoints too and like really arbitrary stuff where it's just like your health refills if you hide behind something unless yeah. it's a boss battle 
and then you just need to really plan everything totally differently. So there was definitely mm. some hard stops here and there, which is like, all right, this helicopter's just murdering me. I'm going to go to bed and deal with this later. Yeah. Uh, and then was, figure it out. What was the more Path like, of Neo. well-received Matrix game? Path of Neo. Like, there's only two. Well, there's, sorry, there's three because there was Matrix Online, but the Matrix Path of Neo, I think, is the one you're thinking of. I was thinking of Matrix Online. Was that more oh. well-regarded? That was an MMO, I mean, it was well liked from what I heard. Yeah, yeah, and it also had canonical stuff, like yeah. important stuff yeah. that actually comes up in Resurrections, which was fun to look at. Um, but yeah, like all of it's just woven into the larger Matrix fabric, I guess. But it was a nice portal back to that era of gaming and hooking up the Xbox again. Uh, so that led me to play Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, uh, okay, which... Okay. I'm enjoying quite a bit. I mean, it's sort of in that like precursor to Mass Effect type stuff. It's a sequel to a Bioware sure. game that was sort of the forerunner of that stuff. Yeah. Obsidian had like 15 months to make this game, and it kind of shows here and there. It's kind of ugly and sort of bottles you up a lot. Like It's just like you are here now, and your ship got stolen from the impound lot, so you can't leave. <laughs> you just need to do some quests here for a while. Uh, but overall, I'm still really enjoying it. It's it seems pretty well written. A lot of conflicting like uh, factions that you're doing quests for and running into little moral decisions. Got some dark side points by accident several times today. Uh, I, I I apparently I'm a slave owner now, and I didn't want that to happen. I didn't mm. want that to happen. I mean, but... they all say that though. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So she's dancing in the cantina, earning money for me. <laughs> I thought I could set her free or she'd join my party, but none of that was available. So it's just like, well, at least you sure. don't have these yeah, okay. terrible owners, I guess. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I'm the friendly one. Come on. Yeah. I'm the friendly the one. Yeah. Really thrown. I paused for a while after that and was just like, should I load a save? Like, I have to play this bad card game again to do that. But it's there's basically blackjack, space blackjack in that game. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's probably the worst version to go back and play. It is allegedly the buggiest, and the community for that game has like fixed that game and made it way better on PC. Sure. But I just love a gamepad. I don't. I'm dumb for gamepads. So does it not have controller support on PC? Well, it won't have original Xbox controller support. <laughs> That's Why? what I enjoy. I mean, you so can just they... get a converter for that. You could I guess so. Pull I'm, in, I'm yeah. well in at this point. It's too okay, late now. Yeah. I'm just going to okay, deal sure. with the frame rate and the wonky sitting animations and stuff that's been happening. Uh, nothing game breaking. Put out a like Xbox One controller that feels and is shaped and modeled like an original Xbox controller, but it has all the buttons you would need for an Xbox One, and it works with modern hardware. Okay, hmm. that was definitely something I was not expecting with the Enter the Matrix. Is like the black button is shoot. Oh, I was yeah. like pressing R, oh, pressing God. A, just like, what is going on? And it's like, no, no, dude, it's this tiny little button on the right side below the like buttons. And it's like, the face button. why would you map this? There? Well, it's because the Duke wasn't like that. That's why the Duke used to have six, all six lined up. Oh, so it'd be in a more convenient place. But yeah, yeah, no, it was just weird. And then eventually I got so used to that that when I popped in Path of Neo, I was like, this is weird. RT is shoot. Oh, you did play, play Path of Neo. Nice. I played a little bit of it. I, I'm interested in playing more of it, but I was matrixed out at that point after yeah, having right. just finished a game. <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to ask about that because I've heard the ending for that game is kind of bonkers. So I'm curious. Yeah, to see there's apparently a weird it. alternate fight or something. I'm, I'm curious to get to that point at some point. Uh, but yeah. And then this whole era kind of made me like think about Burnout Revenge, uh, which is <laughs> yeah. from that time frame. But I knew there was a 360 version, and I've always kind of been upset at how expensive it was used. But then I remembered Xbox Games On Demand exists, and it's only $12.99 that way. So I bought that. And it's like fundamentally Burnout, but it's very like bite sizey and kicks you back to menus a lot, or as I've gotten used to the Paradise way of you're kind of always oh, yeah. in. Yeah. So I probably still prefer that, but it's still it's still pretty fun. Uh, probably the hardest thing to go back to, though, is like that era of like new metal and like all the music they put in there. <laughs> oh, oh, man, yeah. I still love that soundtrack. I'm just skipping a lot. of. It's like, oh, OK, there's a Chemical Brothers song. I'll listen to that again, I guess, while I'm doing this. But then during the crash mode, they just have a default track and you can't change it. You just have to have that. And yeah, I never play. got that. So, yeah. But it's it seemed like a good value. The achievements are stingy. 
like they are like oh. early launch era achievements. I have gotten before they knew kind of what to do with achievements. Yeah, at least half of them seem to be online related, so I'll probably never see those ever. Uh, and then the others are just like do get perfect on every event in this category and you'll get 20 points or something. It's like, all right, yeah. I'll get there eventually maybe, but I have gotten zero in like eight hours of play. So yeah, sure. that's how it used to be. Uh, and then the weird thing that was eating up a lot of time over the past couple weeks was Dragon's Dogma. I Dark revisited Arisen. this wow. as well, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> how are you enjoying the adventure? So I fell off. I tried this back when it came out a long, long time ago, and I hated it. Um, and then I tried it again about maybe four years ago, and I got into it, but other things came out, and I kind of put it on the back burner. Revisiting okay. it now, it's like, it's interesting in a lot of ways, but it plays like an old shitty game that's hard to get used to in a lot of ways as well. I, yeah, my kind of word for it was like, it's kind of arcadey or something. It's really mashy and like, weird combat you're just kind of smashing buttons a lot as your dude and your pawns <laughs> fight giant monsters but there's cool uh, ideas where you can grab onto anything and like you're supposed to actually jump and grab onto the monsters to hit their weak points with like proper yeah there's like a sort of mini things. shadow of the colossus like climbing on the creature but it looks super weird which is kind of charming but yeah there's yeah. some really great ideas in a shitty like game play thing wrapped it in there. There's some cool stuff though. My my biggest like headache with it is it'll just fail quests at weird arbitrary times. Like yeah, or, but those or, quests don't matter. Those are just time based like things you can do for extra money from the board. Well, there there was one side quest in particular where it involves this witch in this forest and yeah. this golem is supposed to wake up and all this stuff, but I'd already gone to the capital city to yeah. turn in the hydra head and it's yeah. just like, what's going on? How do I get these bay leaves? And it's like, oh, you can never get those in this playthrough because you didn't go here before you went this other place. Like, yeah. it's just a weird way to structure that. Like, yeah, a Skyrim would have like seven ways you can plug into a quest depending on what part of it you found. Yeah. This is just like, no, no, there's one NPC outside of this village before this threshold. If you don't talk to them, forget it. So that stuff kind of sucked. Like, if you're looking for achievements or anything, I've already failed out of a bunch of them. Oh, yeah. I don't uh, care about achievements at all. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, but I think my favorite thing about it is the pawn system. Like, coming out yeah. of Dark Souls 3, it's just like I have all these weird, chatty characters hanging out with me, just constantly keeping me company as I go on adventures. Uh, so it's like, oh, it's like Lord of the Rings. I got my own Gimli and Legolas here with me, and we're going to climb up this, you know, Cyclops and cut his head. And they won't so, shut up nice. about what its weakness being fire, like over and over again. <laughs> My favorite shout for them is just like human bones that move on their own. Like yeah. they're always amazed that there's a skeleton <laughs> fighting them. Yeah. So yeah. 40 hours in, like they're still just so impressed with this, this monster. So it, I don't know. It's, or or they'll Child pick up Wonder terrible Man. stuff like moldy pumpkins that I didn't want to pick up. It'll just be like, oh, this is interesting, and then it goes into their inventory. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. An actual child, kind of. Yeah, yeah, no, they're really silly characters to have hang out with you, but it's that makes it a little bit different anyway. I'm at a weird kind of juncture, like sort of like Monster Hunter World. There's like credits once you beat the thing, yeah. But then there's a real ending when you do some more things. So I'm between endings, I guess. I is, don't know the true nature of everything. Is this but because I of the, the Dark dragon. Arisen thing? Because Dark Arisen uh, was additional content. I accidentally went there like really early in the game and like oh. a wolf killed me. Like it was yeah. nothing, one bite. And it's like, oh, I guess that's a level 50 wolf. I'll come back later. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I, I've put that on the side. But yeah, I'm kind of... After I fought the dragon, got the dragon's dogma. It's in my inventory, but now there's there's a whole other thing I need to do. So I've I've kind of been waiting on that. I did unceremoniously lose a like pawn I'd adventured with for like thirty hours. They just like fell or something, and I didn't notice it, and they that were just sucks. gone. That so, sucks. Yeah. It's like where oh, where was Raywin? What happened? And it's like now they're That's gone, like... and then the servers were janked out, so I couldn't like see who I previously adventured with. Mm. anyway it's like some um journey, journey shit where shit. you're like with the same person for a while and they're just gone it's like i can't 
keep playing without you know yeah. sweaty balls 420 that was a little bit dude. yeah i was sort of bummed out that i lost this random npc that i'd been hanging out with but yeah it's kind of like an asynchronous multiplayer thing you're basically playing with a bot someone else created yeah. and dressed up and stuff so yeah kind of neat so kind of janky that, but... um where do you land on the anime there's a dread it's <laughs> talking about anime coming yeah out. it's on netflix i believe oh yep. man uh sort of baffled because it's a weird fantasy world i guess but i don't like it kind of just reminds me of that movie dragon heart like a dragon literally steals your heart at the beginning and you're linked to it and all this so i don't know what new angle they can find but i I don't know all the secrets in everfall yeah i'll I'll beat it for real and then see if i'm intrigued by this anime (laughs) odd choice look up the anime no i couldn't care less okay capcom but yeah yeah All that's right. the most recent game i played came out like 10 years ago what's baffling to me is that it plays kind of like a game from the early 2000s came out in 2012 after things like demons and dark souls have come out and kind of like shown maybe how you should do like a fantasy adventure no yeah the the mashy combat was like early ps2 or something yeah <laughs> but it's it like feels in this grand earlier. world it feels so... earlier than it is <laughs> Yeah, no, it's an odd mix of things, but I overall found it kind of funny and just a different change of pace from the bleak world of Souls. It's, it's super like a fun. goofy. I like version, the combat yeah. and mechanics in it a lot, actually. I think it's super mm-hmm. fun. The story. Oh, I've been juggling awesome. jobs a lot too to like learn new skills and stuff, which is kind yeah. of fun. But yeah, so that's my lineup of games. Uh, yeah. John, what have you been playing? Finally finished Elden Ring. Nice. Wow. Finally nice. free. That end boss Finally is free. terrible. Uh there's no yeah, way we kinda. can talk about it without spoiling it, but it's a bad boss fight after like some decent ones. <laughs> Dude, there's just the that last quarter of the game just kind of blows. Oh, I disagree. I think the last three bosses, the last one itself is bad. The other two are some of my favorite in that game. Uh, there's no less. way to talk about it without. I mean, yeah, that's the problem because I'm just like, I can think of like, you didn't find that part at the end of Zula, stupid, but it's like, yeah, we can't have this discussion without it being on, <laughs> on cast. Oh, no, that's one of my favorites. Malaketh is who you mean? That's oh, no, I mean the fact that that the fight's guarded by that fucking giant ass horseman before you get there why is this yes. no enemy that's normally no. a boss guarding a even worse boss no you're right that npc is that actual was stupid. Like, what is happening here <laughs> like reese true. and i are playing it i get wiped like a dozen times i'm like this is so stupid and then we get to the boss I'm like oh it's this character oh shit he was that character oh fuck this fight's gonna suck yeah and then that's that's just like the the roller coaster we went through and then it, I went and fought Melania, and <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was terrible. Yeah. What the fuck? Yep. <laughs> Heard a lot about Melania. Yeah. That I have opinions, but my opinion currently overall is I had a good time, but I am never playing another Souls game again. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's fair. Yeah, no. That Brandon basically... Sanderson. <laughs> but like most of the stuff I liked about Elden Ring apparently isn't common in the other games. So it's like, right. okay, cool. The experience I had here and liked isn't normal. So uh, I guess I'll wait for Elden Ring 2 and then maybe try it again. Oh, okay. That's what I mean. Going forward, they've oh, figured yeah, yeah. something out maybe. But yeah. That Millennium okay. fight is hilarious. Oh my God. The Why only does reason... she heal off of a block? It's not even that. It's She has the one move, man. And the one time I beat it, it's because she didn't do that move. Every other time she I, did it, and every other time she, like, one-shot me. I, I didn't even take my mage to that fight. I took my melee character. And then, like, on yeah. my, my like, third attempt or fourth attempt, I got the phase two. I'm like, oh, man, okay, this maybe this is doable. Nope. Yeah. So dumb. That fight is so cool and so bad. It's like the yes. worst fight in the game because they a broke thousand percent, it. But it's like the most like beautiful looking fight. It's so fucking cool, but god damn it, they ruined it <laughs> mechanically. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, Paul and I will have discussion off cast, but yeah, I'm I'm free <laughs> so I can play other things, which is why tonight I played Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. So a friend okay. was just like, "Yo, uh, you want to play? Like, I play Sea Thieves a lot. You want you want to learn how to play?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Mm-hmm. So I hopped in with them. They did me like a little crash course for like an hour. Uh, interesting game. We yeah. uh, my this first the first time you played Sea of Thieves. First time installed it today. Okay. Uh, this is for, weird because it it's is. like part management sim, part like make your own adventure, but there is it, some like written stuff yeah. in there. Like it, it, it's weird. Like he gave me the, the crash course. I learned like the default stuff to do. And then the first building we went to, our ship got shot at as like after we were inside the base because another group showed up. Yeah. And yeah. then he literally parlayed with them to make them not like steal all of our stuff. And then, uh, cause they were like, oh, I got a new player here. He wants to learn how to play. It's like, okay. And then they still kind of mess with us. So they, they shot a TNT barrel to kind of <laughs> test our resolve as they said it. But by doing that, they sunk their own ship. So then, uh, <laughs> we had to like bring them on our ship. I had to get their treasure, put it on. And then we gave them a ride back to like a base, gave them some treasure. Oh. It was just like this weird experience. I'm like, this is so, I don't think I've ever played a game like this, like had an experience like this. That sounds yeah. like a good multiplayer time. My favorite thing about Sea of Thieves is when you break out your instrument the and shanties. everyone plays together. Totally. Dude, yep. I love that there's like a ton of different instruments. As soon as I saw a banjo, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe I'll give this another try later. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was, did you ever die? Oh, yeah, no. Well, on purpose, my, my friend was like, yo, uh, can you shoot him so he can see what the afterlife looks like? So yeah, that thing's that's a cool yeah. like first surprise when that first happens. Yeah. Suddenly on a ship. Did you, did you get blown out of a, a cannon? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they did all Mer- the stuff for you. Like, Mermaid yeah. brought me back. Yeah, I, I feel like I've had like the core experience of that. I don't think I was super digging the combat, but like his yeah, his net was kicking, it was having some issues, so that might have been part of it. I, but everything I would else agree. Seemed neat. The combat's not great. It's like weirdly mashy with like not a lot of like good feeling to it. It's, yeah, we were finding phantoms. There's like, like no feedback, really. I really do feel like on, on paper, it sounds super cool. And the the multiplayer aspect of it is super cool. But I kind of just don't like playing it. Like anytime yeah. I'm doing like their missions, like they're so, you know, pu- no pun intended, but like these watered down missions that just kind of aren't very fun. Yeah, mm. um, it really is just kind of interacting with other people and making your own fun is kind of the real draw there. Very sandboxy, I've noticed. Yeah, yeah. Man, it seemed neat. I'll probably play with them again at some point. And I know I got a bunch of streamer friends that want to do it, get a group together. So maybe we'll do that at some point too. Who knows? Did you fight a kraken? No. Okay, that's fun. That's a fun thing. I, to wa- do. I did the tutorial, which you watch a kraken take down a boat you're shooting at. So which that was kind of neat. Cool. Right on. Uh, Paul, what have you been playing? Uh, I finished up Kirby, so that's done. Uh, that post game content is more interesting in like their enemy placements and the things they ask you to do, but it's definitely just a, like we're throwing more a bunch of collectibles you need to collect to see the true ending or whatever, and you're going to revisit places you visited. It was fine. It's like a victory lap type thing where you're collecting stuff and. It's a little bit more challenging. Uh, And that end boss is not as good as the main story end boss. But that's okay. 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 Uh, I bet Rogue Legacy 2 finally hit 1.0. So I jumped back into that pretty full bore. And that's been my life. I also picked this up. Yeah. Uh, The best thing about it is that the weekend I binged the early access when that released carried over. So I had like almost a hundred thousand gold just waiting for me to like upgrade the castle right away from when I played a whole bunch of it. The kind of bad thing is that it also saved the fact that I beat the only area that existed back then. So like I didn't get to redo the boss for the first time or any of that stuff again. Uh, I just kind of started back where I left off, but that's all right. Um, There are a lot of classes <laughs> in this game. There are just a, crazy amount of them and uh they're all good like the cook is become one of my favorites mainly because the frying pan thing you can knock back uh projectiles with and then if you hit an enemy with it your next hit is a crit so there's some good stuff you can do there and uh yeah i don't know it's just more rogue legacy but it's been kind of fun jumping back into that sort of thing we did rogue legacy for tdp plus right yeah we did yeah yep I was going to ask, do you feel like it's a worthy successor? Absolutely, yeah. It's so good. 
beautiful. It's very, very good. Does it look the same, or is it better? No. <laughs> it's better, but it's a, it's the same type of art style, if that makes sense, but, like, better animation and quality, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I also, from what I was hearing, this one is kind of more Metroidvania-esque, like, you're getting, spe like, specific power-ups you need to, like, access stuff. Yeah, so the different biomes whatever you want to call them like the different areas are you are separated by a thing you need to get to be able to cross it so like the first one from the first area to the second now you don't just kind of like traverse to it you need an item that allows you to do one of those slashing jumps off of a certain like certain sconces and certain attacks and stuff like that and the reason for that is because there are enemies later on down the road that will only be damaged if you have that ability. So they kind of lock a bunch of places off like that, which definitely makes it feel less open, which I guess could be a criticism for the game. But I don't know, like you're not going to be doing the thing anymore where you pick the minor class and then just jump to like the fourth biome and just like get gold or whatever, really, because... You kind of can't really go into those areas without just being absolutely murdered or even get into them without certain items. So there's that's kind of a bummer, but they also, yeah, I don't know. They also give you more things that you can do in the smaller areas and you don't feel like you need to be more open with it, if that makes sense. Like, but if, it's still a randomly assembled dungeons? Randomly but... assembled dungeons, but different, like obstacle types that you can't deal with if you don't have a thing yeah thing. there's like different areas or whatever and another way to offset it now is that you can find a character at some point that you can buy the like teleport to the start of those other areas so it's no longer you have to lock the castle down every time mm -hmm. if you want to continue it's if you found this character and pay whatever they want or whatever you can just shortcut directly to like area two or three or whatever uh, so you can actually progress. It's not just a slog through the first few areas every time. Okay. Is this That's only good. on PC right now, or what's the and list? Is it I think on... no, it's definitely on Xbox. Okay. And Xbox, yeah. Because I know, yeah, because it, it was still in early access till like what last week. Yeah. 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 I don't. I think it's on other consoles too, but I just know I because I picked it up on Xbox. Oh, okay. And I know it was having like a. Uh, um, a launch, launch discount, discount. Of like 20 so if mm. it, you know if you're interested in it, now might be the time to jump on it to save a few bucks yeah yeah that thing's good and then of course i jump back into bug snacks for the isle of big snacks i accidentally typoed in the thing here. oh yeah i thought the this DLC. was a new game or something i was like isle of bug snacks sequel no but okay how big are the are the big snacks so they're moderately big it depends which ones you're talking about they're not like i'm talking about bunger uh, i mean they're not like kaiju big they're just they're as big as you maybe like a bit bigger so yeah i don't know that's a little bit disappointing uh i guess the disappointing thing though is that that mechanic kind of sucks <laughs> like because oh, really you can't catch the big snacks the big bug snacks uh you have to do a thing where you have to get an item that you like throw at them to make them small and then you can catch them but they only stay small for a certain amount of time and that item only is like when you pick it up it only lasts for a certain amount of time so it just added like a time limit for you to do puzzle out how to catch stuff and then it just kind of sucks I, I feel like time limit to puzzle stuff out was kind of how you caught all of them in some way like i need to freeze this one and while it's frozen i can get it but you know the freeze only lasted a, a, like sure but what if you couldn't freeze it until you did this other thing so now there's another time limit on you being even able to start the process of sure yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know it's i want okay. like a kaiju bunger i want it to when yeah. it says bunger the ground to shake yeah, no, they're not that big. That's the problem. Oh, man. <laughs> that's, that's disappointing, honestly. Yeah, they didn't go full board. Like, do you hear that? That's like, what is that? Oh, my God, it's a bunger over the trees. It's like, no, it's a bunger, like, maybe human size down there. Like, who gives a shit? I mean, that's better than nothing. Well, 
I'll take what I can get. Yeah. Well, my question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say my question to you, Paul, is: Do you feel the DLC was worth it? Since it's like what? It's been two years since Bug Snacks came out. I mean, for it being free, absolutely. <laughs> but oh, no, I yeah, guess that's true. It, it, it but uh. Update. Yeah, I, I think I was more impressed with the fact that they updated they've updated the game since then a few times as well, where they give you a hut and you can like if you're if you play the game now, when you're doing quests for people, you're also getting like decorations and stuff you can put in your little hut. And I found like that stuff was more substantial <laughs> than this DLC. That, that was in the Isle of Bug Snacks DLC. Oh, was that all? That, that was here. in the trailer for it. Yeah. Okay, that stuff is, I think, more substantial, weirdly, for, like, people experiencing this for the first time. If that makes sense. I don't sense. want you to get into spoilers, but how There's do you barely. feel they handle the story stuff? Uh, it doesn't have any effect. Like, so this... Not at all? Because I had heard it does kind of go back into the story a bit. This is, encro this is encroached into the main game. Like, this isn't after or a prequel or, or anything right? right this is just another quest you can do and uh they make like some mentions of like well there's like corpses of grumses here like maybe this is where they try to get away from something or like they make slight allusions to some things but they don't do anything with it because theoretically if you're a first-time player you should be able to do this without knowing the end sure yeah that ending is messed up, man. Uh, there is some yep. character development stuff going on where characters that hate each other kind of, like, find even ground. Specifically, I don't remember their names. Uh, the sci One of the scientist ones and the hippie lady, Shelda, I think is her name, uh, who I just absolutely can't fucking stand. They hate each other because one of them's a hippie and, like, believing in Mother Nature and stuff, and the other's a scientist because cliches. And then, like, in this, they learn to, like, see from each other's point of view. So there is, like, character stuff in there. I just could not be... I could not care less. <laughs> is the, like, is the workout one... Is he featured in this DLC? Because yeah, he's the he, best one. He has the, some yeah, decent bro, stuff in Jim there. Bro. Uh, okay, Chadlow. 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 <laughs> yeah, I was trying to remember it. He he has some important character growth as well, uh, especially with like his relationship with actually with his muscles. No, mm. not that. Okay. <laughs> I can't remember his. So they all you go to the island with like four of them or something, and they all kind of have a small quest line of something they want to accomplish here. His thing is he wants to see if he can like become big like one of the big bug snacks <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> that sounds exactly like chad Lowe, and that's fantastic and then when All right, you you might have won me back on this dlc <laughs> then when you very early find out that like nah you probably can't he's just his quests after that are just let's play let's shoot some hoops together for a while <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <All right. laughs> sure. he really is the Great. best character out of them all holy shit <laughs> Yeah. So I guess as the only person who hasn't played Bug Snacks here, does this make it better? Like flesh out the game, make it like more... No, but it doesn't make it worse. It's okay. Just, it's just more richer. Yeah, and I'm assuming that these quests are also totally optional. They a hundred percent optional to the end game. Yes, a hundred percent optional. Yeah, I think they even said in the trailer, like, hey, if you've already beaten this game, like loading up your save will put you right at the point to just start the DLC. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't sync right away for me. So when I reinstalled the game, I didn't have my save right away and I was freaking out a little bit because you have to play a substantial amount of the game to get to the point otherwise that you can do it. And I was like, oh, fuck, I don't want to play. Right. You need to like collect all the, the people first. You need to build Snacksburg essentially, or at least the yeah. very base of it. And yeah, fuck doing that again just to see some DLC. <clears throat> It's about three hours long, also, if uh, you're taking your time through it. So it's pretty you short. You feel it's worth going back to as, if you've beaten the game? I kind of like just being in that world because I play a lot of, like, really, like, dour, dire shit a lot of the time. So sometimes it's fun to be just, like... Just to see a really big bunger. Just to, like, catch a weird moving apple or something with eyes with a bunch of stupid muppets like sometimes it's just nice to be 
not fighting for your life. Sometimes it's nice <laughs> to just shoot hoops with this muscle bound Muppet guy. Well, that's that's maybe one of the worst parts, just because the physics feel bad, not because of the situation, but like throwing it's stuff. Not Chadlow's fault. Sh- it's not Chadlow's <laughs> fault. <laughs> uh, that's it for me. Cool. Um, I played, or I'm playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Nice. Is this worth going back into that game for? I yes. Okay. So I'm going to I'm not going to give spoilers because it's it's almost kind of hard to talk about what this is. First off, if you don't know what Stanley Parable is, the game came out in 2013. That's yeah. kind of all about like meta humor and like the concept of choice in video games. And it's all about like there's a really great narrator, great voice acting, lots of fun jokes. And your whole gameplay is kind of subverting how a typical game would work or what the narrator is saying just to kind of see like, well, the narrator is telling me to go through the door on the left, but if I go through the door on the right, what'll happen? Oh, they did record a whole section of lines for if I did that. Yeah. Just kind of discovering like, what can I do to mess up this game? Um, so when you do enter the game, it does ask you, did you play the Stanley parable before? Okay. If you say no, you don't get access to any of the new content until you've played a significant amount of the Stanley parable. Oh, if you okay. say yes, you have to do like two, maybe three runs of whatever length you want. How before... important is your memory of, so I played the Stanley parable when it came out. I don't remember shit about it. So should I say no, if I bought this or I, I remember think... like a handful of gags, but yeah, that's I, it. Yeah. Maybe there's stuff I didn't see. Yeah. Ever. So, so it sounds like you're both in the exact same boat. I did. I was not somebody who like got all the endings, no. found all the like crazy collectible yada yadas did everything i didn't sit there for four hours playing the baby mini game right it eventually they had a dog so you can't just strap your controller down you have to actually be playing for four hours straight i played um, some minutes of the baby game but <laughs> yeah. yeah okay um so i think you're fine because because even if you say yes which i did you do have to still play a couple runs of it okay for a door will just open that's with bright lights to say like <laughs> new content this way Okay. Um, so in those runs, you know, you'll play for at most maybe an hour before you get to the new content. That's that's even c- kind of probably a bit generous. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, so you'll kind of just pick up on like, oh, yeah, I remember this game. Yeah. Is this a patch for Stanley Parable or like an upgrade? It's new standalone. It's a new. I think it's a different oh, studio okay. even built it. Yeah. Um, oh, OK. I believe the guy is still t- tied to it, though. It's the same narrator. And what's pretty great is the narrator sounds exactly the same. So just like kudos, kudos on them for like getting, making, making just the audio recordings match perfectly. Cause like yeah. as someone who deals mm-hmm. with a lot of like audio setups, that's impressive. Yeah. From, from, these are like nine years apart. That's just impressive. Cause it's such a good sounding narrator they got. And he doesn't, I was, it's kind of wondering like, is this guy going to sound like a decade older? And no, it just, it sounds like a continuation. So you know, so you're playing it, you're playing Stanley Parable, and you're like, oh, I am remembering some of this. I'm supposed to click on this door like a hundred times because there's the whole achievement gag, and it's going to make me run around and yada yada. So you'll 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 get caught up pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Then it has okay. the new content, and I don't want to get too much into the new content, but right. new content is it's good. It's more of a kind of reflection on what the Stanley Parable was and what it was to like broader games. So it's a lot of it's a lot of like meta sure. thing looking back on what the Stanley Parable kind of did in the game. I don't want to say like in the game industry because it wasn't like a huge thing. Yeah. Like he, for example, they talk about like the Steam reviews of it in one part mm. and stuff like that, and okay. then they make a bunch of jokes on stuff like that, and then and and then it it's evolves further. Than it, ever it evolves further into something kind of something a little bit different. And then it and then it changes after that, and they start putting you stuff back into the Stanley Parable, so that the Stanley Parable is now different than you remember it. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So it's what I'm trying to say is this is not a port of the Stanley Parable yeah. if you if you are playing the new content. Okay. So you you Good. shouldn't go into this thinking, oh, I played that. I don't need to play this one because it's just this game with like higher resolution textures on the Xbox. It's also on the Xbox now. Um, 
and they like call that out in the narration <laughs> uh at, at one point at least i'm playing on the xbox maybe on the pc they don't it's also worth noting if you own the stanley parable on steam you can get this one for like significantly discounted sure oh so when chad said it was like 30 percent off yeah um otherwise it is typically 25 american is the the mm. default price um yeah i don't really want to say too much more about it it's i think it's cool and i think Stanley parable is one of the funnier video games ever and this is more of that and it does some fun stuff with with its concept again okay I'm glad that you mentioned that it's like not just a port because I honestly kind of thought, oh, I played that. Like, I am that guy that looked at it and I'm like, yeah, I played that. Okay, cool. Oh, it really isn't. <laughs> okay. Like, you're in for a treat. Just make sure you say, yes, I have played the Stanley Parable and you'll be fine. If you're listening to this, though, however, and you haven't played the Stanley Parable, I you really shouldn't skip to the new content. Stanley Parable on its own is fantastic and it is worth playing that for a few hours before they let you in yeah but i think you'll be missing out on kind of why this the the new stuff is as interesting as it would be if you don't have any kind of experience with the stanley parable i still gotta load up the original to get that five-year achievement or whatever so. this this one has a 10-year achievement oh good <laughs> <laughs> it also has play for the entirety of a tuesday oh boy <laughs> so um I better get after that, that then, because I got some free Tuesdays, so... <laughs> okay. Um, another small game, this is on mobile, it's actually also on Steam, Not Words, not spelt like like string tying knots, so with a K. Um, right. It is free on mobile platforms, otherwise it is 12 bucks on Steam. The mobile version also has the option to pay a $5 subscription, or just pay $12 to get everything. Um, if you're playing the free version like I am, you get like a subset of puzzles each month. Whereas if you get the paid version, you get like triple the amount of puzzles each month. This is like crosswords mixed with like some anagram kind of stuff. It's it's a little hard to explain, but think of like a crossword puzzle. And instead of the definitions of words being the clue, there's an anagram in the corner of like a subset of the crossword so you know okay within these three boxes it's going to require these three letters in some configuration and then by like process of elimination you're like okay well i know over here you can't start this word with a g so it's going to be one of these two and, and you're kind of hinting it out that way it, it it's a little hard to explain if you like games like wordle spell tower if you like zach gauges you know design philosophy it, when it's it comes intuitive to when you're looking at it though like it yeah it readily... and it's a really good how to play um, okay so you know like i said yeah if you like word games and puzzle games maybe check it out again that's not words with a k uh, all one word and it's free on uh on mobile platforms or uh, it is on steam if you'd prefer that oh this is cool uh, last game i played is halo infinite's multiplayer season two launched oh cool uh, so new new battle pass i picked it up uh gotta get gotta get that clippy e like uh emote uh, for my Spartan oh like there's microsoft oh, no. jokes in there oh yep. no i want that one at some point um the so the new stuff which is kind of exciting there's a bunch of new modes the big one is called like last spartan standing which is basically gun game um okay and, but each person has five lives uh and for those who don't know gun game you everyone starts with like the bottom tier weapons and as you get kills and points with them you can upgrade to better weapons and whatnot. And it, you, every, as people are losing lives, it goes down to fewer and fewer players. It's like a game of, think of 12 people at once. But what's really cool is the map is like a big team battle map. Um, big team battle being the like huge maps in Halo Infinite's multiplayer where there's like 24 Spartans running around and, and just being obnoxious and whatnot. Um, so they added a few new maps that are, are really cool and I'm liking quite a bit. Uh, there's a few other new modes uh, that I haven't played as much of because a lot of them are solo. Like you can't go in there with a group and a lot of my Halo multiplayer I play with like a, a buddy in my party. Um, so I haven't played a ton of the stuff, but I did play a good chunk of uh, Last Spartan Standing and I'm just I'm just saying that I like that mode. So Halo is still well, good. 
What's did the, the general uh, verdict? Oh, sorry. Uh, is it, did wait. the co-op ever come out? The campaign co-op? Co-op is not out nope. yet, no. I think that's planned for this summer. <clears throat> Was the general verdict on Infinite, like, pretty positive? I only see, like, a angry Reddit community is my only way to ever see this. <laughs> but there's a community, so they're still invested. But they're complaining yeah, about my. I believe changes. it was pretty positive. I know I re- quite enjoyed it. Paul, you liked it. Yeah, quite me a and bit Sean too, both the, the like mul- it. The campaign. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that's campaign all that matters. Like it's, <laughs> it's also like on Game Pass, so you could play it for five bucks. Oh, yeah. okay. So. Like the campaign and everything, not just the yep. multiplayer yeah. free to play. The, the, well, the multiplayer is free, free, so you could just yeah. play that. Yeah. Just I and wish campaign. listed on Steam, and I was like, hey, you could just play this. It's like I know, but like for real how much is the get on board cost but game pass i guess i think, pass, full, I guess, I think if you want to buy the game you could spend 60 dollars or whatever that is in the canadian equivalent is money. in canadian yeah. money <laughs> yeah or you could just subscribe for a month of game pass and get access to everything okay so halo's good i like it yeah that show i stopped watching the show that show is so boring it's bad yeah yeah, I didn't know it didn't even four. come out yet. I thought there was still time before that came out. Yeah, well, there's it's like six episodes out. already out. Yeah, they're done, I think, this week. <laughs> I, Did uh, Neil Blomkamp it. have anything to do with it in the very end? I don't Did he produce think so. it or anything? Peter Jackson. So, no. Okay. I don't think so. Weta. Anyway, I watched the fourth episode and I was like, I think I'm done with this. This is not enjoyable anymore. I've heard Four's rumors. Four's a good mark in a TV show. I've yeah, heard rumors they don't of have the latest together. episode is uh a little more less boring but man i'm i'd have to watch three episodes in a row to catch up and that seems yeah. like real bad time <laughs> yeah, no, too little you. too late yeah. yeah it's probably no dragon's dogma by the sound yeah of it, probably so. not <laughs> but what is yeah true. yeah exactly yeah i mean he stole your heart that's just dramatic it's awesome um let's do some news the biggest news this week was that square enix sold off pretty much all of its north america division that's Which right. Crazy. I forgot that this was this week. <laughs> the the craziest thing about this is so they sold it to the Embracer Group, which owns I don't know half of video games. A lot at this of shit. point. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's pretty insane. Um, they sold off <laughs> all of the North American division like except uh, sorry ex- except for um IPs that were developed externally that they were publishing, so they still yeah. own the IPs for Just Cause, Outriders, and Life is Strange. They sold all of this for three hundred million dollars, which is like nothing. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's like Tomb Raider, Deus Ex. Uh, what were the other specifically IPs? the ones that were like highlighted in the press release were Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, and Legacy of Cain. Oh no, not Legacy of Cain. I have Defiance on Xbox, and I might play it one day. When when was the last Legacy of Cain game? It was probably that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and well, so that makes the question like, are are the, they making on a new Legacy of Cain game? <laughs> Didn't they recently port it to like the Switch or something? Isn't one of them on there? Yeah, they I did. Was going through that library, they did some yeah. ports or something of some sort. So there's trickle of coins coming in from that. <laughs> but, okay. So some the pens. studios that have been sold are Idos. Crystal Dynamics, which recently uh, announced the uh, Tomb Raider game, uh, and then Square Enix Montreal, which did like the Hitman Go games, like all those oh, Go yeah. mobile games. Yeah. Um, and then Idos, obviously, like Deus Ex. Um, yeah. Not, I'm not like super surprised because it seemed like whenever there there was like poor sales, Square Enix just blamed their North America studios. Yeah, and like poor sales being like, oh, this only sold two point eight million. Exactly. Yeah, lame. It's exactly. like what? That's probably more than a lot of your other stuff. But okay, three hundred million seems like just like a fire sale. Like we just need these gone. We need see, these off the books and out of here. See, I was gonna come here asking too. Is it really like low, or is it just that other ones have been so high that comparatively? 300 million is not nothing. Like, that's a lot of money. But... And, like, we're not talking about Star Wars or something, which was a billion. Right? Well, but it's just that every time we hear about some buyouts, it's like just astronomical numbers that don't make sense to well, me. Well, I think that's the, ca- the case. Is like, you would think this would be a bit more because they're getting, like, they're... Tomb Raider is a big deal, I think. And that's kind of the only thing. Well, Legacy of Kane. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> My bad. Um. I mean, what yeah. else are they getting? They're getting Household gex? names like <laughs> Tomb Raider and Legacy of Kane. Everybody knows those. All yeah. I'm saying is they themselves pointed out Legacy of Kane. Like that is not a joke. It was well regarded in its day. Like people like yeah. it. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is just um, more of Square who, who Enix. Who's the Embracer Group? That sounds sinister. It's oh, like a syndicate. They're um, they're European Tencent essentially, but like way less big. Oh, okay. And, they, and though, during hey? the pandemic, they have just been buying up game studio after game studio. They own quite a bit now. Uh, they own Gearbox. Um, they were THQ Nordic, right? To begin, I was gonna with. say, they, wasn't they bought, that them? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, okay. Coke Media. They own. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find like a list of what. Embrace oh no! Is. So is the THQ branding like a thing of the past completely now? No, THQ Nordic still exists. Nordic Games okay. is what they used to be. My bad. Okay, okay. But yes, it's that. It's those people. At least to begin Does, with. It, like, was Life is Strange too successful enough to warrant further things in that area? Or you mean Life is Strange? Uh, True Third Colors. Game? True Colors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Well, it, it, that was developed by an outside studio. They were only publishing that. So yeah, that's so why that didn't go with they this can't sale. Sell it. Same with Outriders, <laughs> same with Just Cause. They were only publishing. They, it was oh, like Don't Nod or whatever owns it? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Embracer also owns like Dark Horse, the comic company. Sure. Oh, yeah. cool. Neat. Predator versus Alien comics, dude. It's awesome. They own Saber Interactive. Um, okay. Like, they're like a big deal, man. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna. missing part about this story too. Like, didn't they sell these off specifically because they were trying to use the money to invest in blockchain? Yep. It, well, oh, it, I don't know if it was yeah. to put the money in blockchain, but it was with the the in, the incentive of we want to start focusing more on blockchain games. The other yes. kind of like <laughs> speculation yeah. I'm hearing from a lot of places is, and these are just like rumors, obviously. Is is this Square Enix trying to like slim down, clear off the books so that they can get purchased? Oh God! I mean, like maybe the Japanese division, and then a lot of people are wondering, and Sony, oh, will now yeah. buy a just Japanese only studio. I mean, Square Enix has always hated the West, though. They've always been like, but, we only care about yeah. our Japanese studios. They, right. Here's the thing: Sony's been pivoting to like a more North American audience. Like they literally shut down their major like Japanese branch. Sony's the only company I can't see buying them, unless it's just to rebolster up that market. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, then Sony would have like Final Fantasy right underneath them, right? Yeah. And they do, they have that deal with Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And I still irrationally think Microsoft associate was them. in talks at any point to buy it. Where? Probably. Yeah, probably at some point, right? Hmm. Yeah, something to speculate. Nathan, what were you saying? Well, now I'm just thinking, like, what does this mean for 7 Part 2 or whatever? Like, is that well underway? Probably any day now. Oh. Going to be able to play that? Yeah. I don't think it's any day now. I mean, I think 16 is going to come out before that. Oh, yeah. I, I no, I hope so. Mostly joking how protracted <laughs> yes. that development cycle was, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, transaction no. enables the launch of new businesses by moving forward with investments in fields including blockchain, AI, and the cloud. The move is based on the policy of business structure optimization that the company set forth under the medium-term business strategy unveiled on May 13th. So wait, does this mean oh, like right. I'm playing Final Fantasy VII and then my machine is mining coins for Square? Or Not yet. It could be in the future. Maybe. Okay. Maybe you want your machine to mine for you could you get know, cloud or the ape pictures. The more coins you have, the spikier your avatar's hair gets. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I think they're working on a bored ape movie. They are. Yes, they are. Yeah. I also saw some reports that apparently, like spending on NFTs, is down considerably. So I don't know what's going on with blockchain in general at the moment, that. but it's it's a bit of a roller coaster apparently. Hey man, you gotta you gotta ride the dragon. If you want to get rich. The internet keeps telling me that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you got to create Some your own dragon if you want to get rich. About that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on. Fortnite has come to Xbox Cloud Gaming. 
no membership required. They are also looking at putting more free to play games on there, which means Fortnite is now back on iPhones. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's so good. Um, and Tim, Tim Tim Sweeney did come out saying, "Hey, we're now on iPhones, and you, we don't have you don't have to pay thirty percent to Apple." Man, uh, so good for him, I guess. Yeah, but <laughs> that's I did the it. Rope back. dope. Yep. That's how you do it. Uh, we talked last week about some of the new E3 replacement uh, shows that were going to be announced. Uh, Keeley gave a date for his Summer Games Fest. That's going to be Thursday, June 9th. And oh, as a reminder, normal E3 the, time. The Xbox Bethesda one is on the 11th, 12th, 12th, I think. Dude, I'm excited. There's a yeah. good chance that Callisto Protocol is going to be shown off there finally. Do you guys have like some like pie in the sky? I hope this gets shown off at quote unquote E3. Well, Jeff Keeley did the eyes. Callisto Protocol said like we have something to show soon, and then he repeat he replied to that tweet with the like eyes or whatever is eyes emoji. Oh, yeah. yeah, eyes emoji. So okay. I'm excited. We all know what that means. Yeah, Kotor two. He's gonna remaster. fuck that video game. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> anyway. Yep. Uh, last week, we also talked that Warcraft was going to get a new game announcement, and it was announced. Yep. Warcraft yep. Arc Light Rumble is coming to phones. It was announced in my email. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, quote, a mobile action strategy game set within the Warcraft universe where collectible minis, minis is capitalized, I don't know if that's important, comes to life to battle in frantic melee skirmishes. Uh, the art style leads me to believe this is a Clash Royale ripoff. Yeah, I looked at the... There's actual gameplay out there, too, and it oh. looks like Clash Royale. I love Clash Royale, so I'm okay with this. But, yeah, I mean, this is what Blizzard does. They take a popular game format, and then they put their shit in it. So you're excited, is what you're saying? I'll play it, yeah, for sure. Okay, all right. I hope other... Uh... Warcraft fans are equally excited. Because it's probably free, right? I guess I should ask that first. Do I have to pay I for this know. piece of this shit? I don't know. Blizzard. I feel like there's a big <laughs> caveat on that. Yeah. I feel like it has to like, be Do free. I have to pay for this piece of shit? Because I, mean, I know I'm I saying, won't. All I'm saying, if not words is free, this should be free. Agree. There's I probably mean, yeah. some like microtransaction stuff. You can probably oh, put totally. like, a hat on your dude. Yeah, totally. All right. And last, this is some weird news. The Prince of Persia remake continues to be in turmoil as it has now moved studios and it is back at Ubisoft Montreal that was the original developer of Prince of Persia The Sands of Time. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but if people don't remember the roller coaster this game has taken, it was shown off during a Ubisoft Connect, is that what they're called? Live stream? With some pretty poor looking footage. A bunch of people complained and some developers got online and said, that's just alpha footage, don't worry about it. Then they delayed this game indefinitely. And now it has moved developers. I remember that. People were just like, this looks bad. It's like, oh, it's alpha. What do you mean? It's You said it's coming out in like a month. There's no way this is alpha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how is this remake causing so much like struggle and, and pain? How it's has not this, a very long game. How has this not <laughs> yeah, been just canceled? <laughs> if it, it's I would almost understand canceled. if it was like a trilogy or something. Like they're putting out all of them in one big package. But no, oh, it's just the yeah. first one. Weird. It was a charming game. I don't know. I like this trilogy a lot. I might say it's the best trilo of, uh, trilogy on that generation. I think just the eye shadow with Warrior Within kind of threw me a bit. He was so much more <laughs> that is the angry. Weakest Two Thrones, though, is so good. Two Thrones, pretty sweet. Yeah. Two Thrones or Two Princes. Save how bad Warrior Within kind of is. It is Two yeah. Thrones, yeah. Well, the I, mean, I played Warrior Within on the PSP, so I did. That was even worse. Oh, you oh. you won the lottery on that one. Yeah. All right, that's news. Let's do some questions. Top down perspective at gmail.com is the email address. At TDP Podcast on Twitter is the is the Twitter. There's also the Discord channel and John's PO box. <laughs> And Christopher writes, if you had the opportunity to put a life-sized statue of a fictional character into your local park, who would you choose? <laughs> oh, man. Godzilla. 
Yeah, I was gonna. I was trying to think of like some <laughs> giant monster as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I was specifically looking around my like room and saw my Godzilla figures. I was like, that doesn't make any sense though. Why would well, Calgary that's, that's have the appeal. that? Exactly. Calgary just wanted to block the airspace with a giant Godzilla statue. Yes, yeah, so, like okay. one of the Colossuses or something, just like. I don't know, towering over everything. See, my idea sounds boring now in relation to these, but it's just like, <laughs> what is Calgary's thing? Cowboys. Oh, no. Who's oh, a great cowboy? cowboy? Arthur Morgan. Oh, for and then it'll be like a weird, like, <laughs> it's for the kids, but also like an old man would walk past it and not think twice about it. It's like, oh, it's like a rancher. Or You're whatever, right. And it would go fit. on his way. <laughs> it would blend would into the city here, unnoticed. Yeah. yeah. Man. He's like, wasn't this always here? Or just this cowboy <laughs> statue? <laughs> Yes, Stampede right, found up it again. Calgary, right? Yeah. Um, I was also kind of going similar thing that Nathan was on Calgary, and then I thought the eyeball monster from Monster Rancher. Yep. Swayzo. Yep. With That's like the, the big mouth and like the tongue. Because of our ranching heritage, or what was the? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because I watched Monster Rancher in Calgary. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It all makes so sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick him, and then like the plaque on the bottom would be like, if if you put a music CD in there, it makes a different monster come up. That would be cool. Different statue. Yep. All right. Jedi writes: Have you ever unintentionally played or watched or read any series in chronological order that was not chronological in its order of release? For example. I happen to watch Temple of Doom first, then Raiders, then Last Crusade, which is chronical order, even though Raiders was released first. This is it easy for me. No, I've never done that. No, I don't think I have. If I'm going to I revisit the, something, I will always start at the beginning. I think the caveat is unintentionally. Like yeah. Stephen King wrote a uh, win through the keyhole for his Dark Tower series later, but it slots in earlier in the chronology of the story. So I read it in that order because it existed you know right was, unintentionally so I was like, the... yeah i don't i don't know if i've accidentally stumbled into doing this by like in that very specific way um yeah i don't think i unintentionally have because it's like if i'm if i'm going into something i'm usually doing like i'm looking it up in some capacity yeah um i'm not just like oh what's this movie i'm gonna i'm gonna put it on like I, i'll be like i've never heard of this let me do a google what is this whole thing about if there's any um, younger people i could see them watching Star Wars episode one, two, Star and Wars. three first because yeah. they were kids and then being like, yeah. hey, these are cool. And like the Hobbit watch the movies rest. or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, would, it would probably be more like, they, yeah, they watch one, two, and three. They watch The Hobbit. Then they go, these franchises are terrible. I'm not watching any of the rest of this stuff. <laughs> but see, like, even if I was at that age, I'm the type of person that I'd be like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Let's start from four because that's like the first one that they've released. Like, I, I'll yeah. look it up and then start kind of chronologically of when they're released, not their story. I do wonder if there is, like, a kid that comes up and it's like, I'm going to put Star Wars 1 on, having no recollection or through osmosis, knowing that 4 was the actual first one. Like, they lived in a bubble and their parents would not tell absolutely. them the truth. No, absolutely. Because oh, there are yeah. kids that They're are like, six years house, old. In this house, we respect Jar Jar Binks. Or like, even even when, like, the original print even says, like, Episode 4, A New Hope. So, like, when you see the scroll and it says Episode 4, you're like, what the heck? Why? Yeah. Does anyone mind if I spoil some of the Final Destination movies? Or yes. That? Oh, okay. People I die. Do no, of people course. die. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Obviously, just one of like the last one they made was secretly a prequel, which was yeah. awesome for long-term fans of that franchise. <laughs> I was just like, oh, dude, those are the kids from the first movie. At the end of this one, this all started before. So someone could have conceivably been at a movie theater watching that one just because it's a dumb new horror movie out and inadvertently seen the first chronological entry. That's true. Yeah. But yeah. But, and they wouldn't even have known because they would have right. seen some kids and have been like, those are kids going home now. Right. Yeah, I guess so. They wouldn't yeah. even understand that what they saw. So spoilers. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Oh, is it my turn to read or? Uh, it's mine, actually. Oh, okay. Evan writes in and says, what games have the best AI? Far Cry. No, I, I don't. Okay. Think. I'm going to say uh, that. See where you're going what's, with. What's that alien game? Alien Isolation? Destroy that, all that is an alien yeah. game, yeah. With the, the hiding from the... It's pretty yeah. crafty. It'll 
I'm hiding in that locker, but it's gonna it's gonna get me You're anyway. Thinking of Invaders. Invaders M is there a video game? Probably. No, there's not. Yeah, well, there's Nickelodeon All Star Rumble. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what and that's what <laughs> we were thinking of, right? Yep. Yeah, great AI in that. I just wanted to bring that. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the best. But, you know. Um, I was trying. I was trying to think like what would like. It's like them reacting really well in battle and hiding behind things and flushing me out with grenades and stuff like that. Like that's that's kind of where I was going. But yeah, like Souls games are hard. I don't know if the AI is great. It's pretty simple. It's just how it's arranged. You what know? AI? Yeah. The, like like of that big shark monster that kicked my ass in Bloodborne. You know, <laughs> like is oh, it like his AI? Enemies? Oh, I see. What yeah. You he does that wriggling attack and then close the distance really fast. And that's does the me. um I forget what the term is, but the one for uh, Left for Dead count, the, the, like the game director or whatever they. Oh call yeah, it. the oh, yeah. director. I mean that would be AI. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually an issue. Yeah, that was making that game fresh for a long time. I mean, hey, so. if there's any like robots in the future looking back at this podcast, it's whatever our robot overlords are. You are clearly the best AI. Yep. Um, they're my in, favorites in my, in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought there was two questions to this, but what is the most cursed game mod you've seen? This is from Linebeck. I've been yeah. enjoying the post I've been seeing recently about uh, Stardew, Stardew Valley. I, I was yeah. going to say the same thing. Yeah, I was going to say, Stardew I can't tell if, this is, if these are real or it's a meme. They're real. Are making... they're, okay. they're real. Okay. So uh, at the very beginning of Stardew Valley, you get a letter from your grandpa. You come see him and he's sick in bed. But people keep making mods of specifically that scene of grandpa in bed and keep changing weird things about it. Like one turns grandpa into the bed. One gets <laughs> like completely empties the room. So grandpa's gone. Like it's just like this weird one, it's like, like two family members are playing ping pong on grandpa in bed. Yeah, it's just like this weird like <laughs> this is the dumbest thing to mod. But like it's also amazing that they've committed so hard to this. Are they trying to keep Grandpa alive in their head cannon or something, or is it just funning around? <laughs> he's just funning around because he. I mean, he he's gonna die when he dies, right? But I guess so. You that's can't not stop, stop that. this ping pong game, <laughs> or the <laughs> fact that he is the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, look like into mods he's in that the much. letter, so they replaced the bed with a giant letter. Uh, yeah, hmm. th those are pretty funny. Uh, Are they cursed, though? So, cursed because aesthetically it's weird. Any of the Resident Evil mods where you can, they tune up the expressions to like 5,000% and their faces are just like warping within each other when they're <laughs> smiling and talking. That does sound awful. So that's okay. that's yeah. great. Uh, mechanically, dude, cats instead of zombies in Left 4 Dead is the worst <laughs> oh god because their hitboxes were so their messed small up hit boxes. All about that. <laughs> mechanically it's like so uh... cursed i remember resident when the resident evil 2 remake came out a lot of people switched out um who was the big guy chasing mr x. mr x for mr x for like thomas the tank engine yeah. that's a good one with the theme song playing and everything yeah I don't know that that's cursed. Well, it's kind of scary, actually. Well, yeah, it's, it's like the, the exhibit song like Skyrim's Macho you. Man, uh, Randy Savage Dragon mod. That's another that, cursed one. That is highly cursed. That one, yeah. <laughs> what was the one where it was like Tim Allen sound effects everywhere and on the walls? Oh, yeah, and they, stuff. they replaced every texture and every sound effect in Doom with, with Tim, Tim Allen's face and the the uh, noise. Yep. I watched like half of one second of that because it was the worst. <laughs> Cause you, and because you couldn't, yeah, you, you were laughing too much. You're like, I need to pause this, or I'll, I'll just die. I was peeing my pants. Yeah, I had yeah, to exactly. run. Yep. yep. Anything come to mind for you, Nathan? No, I don't mod <laughs> things enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm glad you guys had answers. Phantom Asius writes: In this hypothetical scenario, you are given a chance to have any console be made for you as a special edition version, exclusively to yourself. Which console will you choose? For example, a special edition Sean Xbox. Can we change things about it? Or yeah, it's it t tailored exactly to what you want. So Okay, so I would make the I switch like, good. I feel like you can change a bit, but you can't be like, this is a GameCube that plays PS5 games and also every game made. This is the Paul box. 
I mean, why? <laughs> I can I literally did that with my Wii U. Well, I just feel like that's against the spirit. You should, yeah, you, no. I mean, you can do maybe you could do like it's a GameCube with two handles because I have two hands. This is the Paul box. Yeah, exactly. No, I was thinking like <laughs> a Switch that is actually modern hardware. Yeah, that's the problem. It's just like I would probably want modern hardware so it, you would actually use it on the regular. Yeah. Like, uh, I would I'd... love to have like a custom Game Boy Advance or something like that. But at the same time, it's just like uh, I don't take my Game Boy Advance around everywhere because I would be afraid of it breaking because you can't get a replacement. The Switch, you can get a replacement. That's true. Yep. I personally probably would still go with the GameCube because it's a pretty formative console for me. Um, sure. And I also want to hold up this orange GameCube. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. uh, just my wife, Brittany, kind of took the guts out of a Japanese one or an American one, put it in a Japanese shell. So it's like out of region color scheme. So nice. nice. It's not custom custom. You doesn't have my it face on, your on it. At all times. Yeah, I just bring it around with me. Yeah. So it has that handle. <laughs> You're supposed it's actually, to. It is. It's convenient. <laughs> hey. uh, I, I, I don't have a specific console, but I just want more see through colors. Okay. Just bring that back. Like Game Boy yeah, Colors. I mean, I yeah. want, mm -hmm. yeah. I think what I want technically exists because I want basically like a Game Boy Color, but it plays Game Boy Advance games and everything else. And so like, you want that's the just pocket. the analog pocket. Yep. That's, I want the analog pocket. Yep. yep. You can have it. It can be yours. I, I am in the pre order list, but I yeah. don't get it until like Christmas. So I kind of want like a Game Boy, but like it also has like a crank. Or when you want to just, like, oh, did you get your play yet? Or are you still waiting? I'm still waiting. From what I understand, they're in the like 4800s, and I'm in the 6000s for order mm. numbers. So oh, you're getting a couple that. more weeks. Uh, the honest answer for me is a PlayStation because that was my formative console, probably. Um. Okay, Suku Suku writes, one of my favorite details about the original Deus Ex is that it had an unusual difficulty setting, realistic, which made damage more like how a real person would take it, and consequently made enemies just as squishy. What's your favorite offbeat difficulty setting in a video game? Uh, I liked 007 mode difficulty. It's what you unlock for beating the game on the hardest difficulty normally. It let you customize everything. Like yeah. you could customize how much damage you could take, how much damage enemies could take. Uh, you could make it so that all enemies shot rockets. Like it was just like this nonsensical mess. You can make the game completely unplayable or like completely custom. Pretty good. Is mirror mode in Mario Kart count? Yeah. I liked when they introduced that. That was pretty cool. I don't have a better answer than that though. What I came up with was like the kind of modability of the chips in near automata where it's like I oh, said yeah. it on easy, but it's like, this is stupid. This is too easy. But then you could like turn off auto fighting and all that stuff to make it at least a little more engaging. I uh, see. OK, yeah. Yeah. Just the customizable element of it. I don't really have a good answer for this one. Can't really think. Did of one of the dead islands have like a permadeath mode? Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't know if that would be good, but I'm curious about it. I don't know. My experience with Dead Island is that trailer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing that everyone combat. loved until the actual game came out. Yeah. Uh, I think this one's mine from Dead. How many times a day do you brush your teeth? I try Once to twice. twice, but yeah. I, sometimes I miss in the morning because I'm in a rush. Really? I'm, there's, it's too, no matter what. There's no way I'm not brushing my teeth. No matter what, I will always brush my teeth before going to bed. No matter what. But sure. I'm the same as Paul. I will just sometimes forget in the morning, or I'll just be like, I'll just use mouthwash because I'm in a rush. I'll just admit to being a one-brush guy. I'm, I'm wow. terrible, apparently, yeah. Holy just, smokes. I'll always do it, but once. Uh, I should water pick more also, but it's so loud, and I go to bed late. So I always I make a mess with the water pick. I hate water pick, so. Yeah, I, I don't have floss. a water pick. I just floss. I got the, like, floss, like, the easy the, like, floss ones. The comb ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those ones rock. Yeah. Um, so I, use, I don't floss as much as I should. I don't um, think anyone flosses as much as they should, not even dentists. <laughs> You're probably right. Um... The idea of not brushing twice would it would break my mind. Like, it's just been... Like, back when I was in school, I'm, it so was I'm not going to lie. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you need to go ahead, Nathan. Oh no, it was just it was easy to be like, well, I'll freshen up before I go somewhere, and then I'll or like I guess work would be the comparable, but I always had like afternoon evening shifts, so I just got out of the oh, habit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, like the pandemic and always having to go with a mask everywhere combined with working from home, it's I always am sometimes like, yeah, no one's gonna smell my breath. Like no one bad. And then I'm like, oh God, I smell my breath. What am I doing? And then kind of like I should <laughs> see go back and brush my teeth. Yeah. I was more anal about it actually because I had to wear a mask. <laughs> and then you could smell your breath. Yeah, because then it's like then the morning one never was missed because I had to live with myself. And Can we do like, like a little census of like electric toothbrush manual? Like who's doing what? Electric. Yeah, electric, electric over here. Yeah. Manual. Okay. Okay. And I was manual until recently, manual? but my dentist uh, recommended. I actually damaged my gums with electrical. I was pressing too yeah. hard with them. Yeah. 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 So yeah. my dentist said, like, like, you should be using electrical, but you have to do it softer. And every time I tried, it was just like, you're just doing more damage. I'm like, screw it. I will just use manual because I feel more comfortable and in control. Sure. See, the not the not doing it twice for me is like I will just have like some anxiety of like if you let your teeth go bad, that is a, a money hole that will just go forever from what I've been told. So it's like I got to be on top of that. Mm. That's true. But I mean, you're ruin, right. I'm going to ruin your life right now and say that even if you do, you can still go in a money hole from your teeth. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and like as someone who just got a root canal, like yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah, but like I gotta, I gotta try and prevent as much. Some as I precaution, can, I get. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you mind if I time travel a bit with the questions? Because I read them <laughs> earlier, and there was one I really wanted to answer that got erased. Isn't Wait, there what? okay? Only uh, two is, left. Well, there was one from I'm 3D Homer that was maybe a cheeky question, but it was what makes a special edition special? And I just wanted to point out these Dead Rising artifacts. <laughs> So. <laughs> there's a pen okay. shaped like a syringe the zombrex yeah 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 all right and then this great stationery that looks like a doctor's pad I so have that. you can yep. prescribe things but it's just your grocery list you know but yep. you need those donuts or whatever so you put them on there you, you tried to fake a prescription it. with that i've never tried to fake a <laughs> prescription with it have you can you on this podcast admit to forgery please thank you yeah. i i will not admit that it also came with an art book which is very standard but yeah. i think what's special about a special edition is something you'll actually use uh like so, the yeah. catherine boxers like the catherine boxers which i did wear <laughs> uh so i think they're still somewhere but those not, weirdly get great. brought up more often than you would think on this it's podcast. really strange <laughs> It's really strange. It's a little concerning. It's a strange addition. It was a strange yeah. thing to get. Yep. But I'll, I'll read my like designated question. Rasterman7, when was the last time you bought a game and played it immediately after? Burnout Ooh. Revenge. <laughs> like I'm going to assume testing doesn't count because I do that a fair amount. Uh... Yeah, no, that doesn't count. Because I also I feel like that. The, the spirit of this is like you have so much excitement. You're just like, I'm playing this yeah. as soon as possible. I'm like, yada, yada. Um, how does this work for Game Pass? Because I will download something and play it immediately if I can. I feel like that counts. Like, the minute you can get access to it, and then you play it. I mean, Trek to Yomi would be it, but I have to do this. <laughs> you can't say it, then. Uh, that wasn't immediately. So. That was the last thing. Oh, gross. It was probably Bug Snacks DLC. I mean, okay, <laughs> to be fair, like, we... We enjoy bug snacks on this podcast. Yeah, I but like I want snacks. a better answer than that. I mean, when Rogue Legacy released, released in 1.0, I reinstalled and played immediately for like hours. So probably that, realistically. It's probably Pacross for me. Usually I'm like, oh, hey, the new Pacross came out. I'll buy it and start it. Uh, other than that, it might be Mario Golf. Sure. Would like the Halo Two season count? Because like when that launched, I bought it and played some multiplayer. I think so. Like day of it coming yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it's it's already that for me. <clears throat> uh, and last question from VGC Kenny. Buckle up. Uh, one day <laughs> your your inherent anomaly sensing is t sorry your inherent anomaly sensor is tingling. Okay. Not sure what it is at first, but felt that the change was big. You figure it out when you look into Pokemon Red and Blue, 
and see not Charizard and Blastoise, but Cinderace and Inteleon. Oh no, it's a Pokemon question. Okay. <laughs> it's a Maverick too. <laughs> yeah. You look into it further and find that as of Gen 8, all the Pokemon gens you know are in backwards order in terms of Pokemon. Also, and I because I know you're gonna ask, Dark Steel and Fairy types are in the game from the beginning. So let's just I was get that out of the way. I'm gonna ask that. Thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> further, further digging leads you to see that there are only that those are the only things that changed. Kanto is still Kanto. Game Boy does Game Boy stuff, and all okay. quality of life stuff happens when it does. Okay. Aside from the series mascot now being more Peko. <laughs> Right? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'm looking that one up. I played that gen and I don't know. What else changes about this world? Oh, that that's what that thing's called? Okay, that, you know what? That's fair. Yeah, I've seen that thing before. So do they mean our Wait, world that? where this happened this way or the game? Because so I can't gen, really... So yeah, now, so Gen 8, Pokemon Sword and Shield, all the Pokemon in that one were in red and blue. So Gen 8 is Gen 1. So it's now a Game Boy game. Inverted, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all the Pokemon have been swapped, basically, but everything else is the same. So it's you're still Kanto, but you're still talking to Professor Oak, but he's giving you your choice between the Sword and Shield starters. Okay. And the quality of life stuff happens when it does, meaning... Same timeline. Like, the yeah. changes, <laughs> yeah. like, the game's getting more, like, in-depth. So the Pokewalker order, happened like at the wrestling. same time, just yeah. a different generation. Just the Pokewalker's now tied to the Gen 7 remake on the DS. Okay. Right, yeah. So obviously, as you know, you can't put like a Geo dude in there, but instead you could put insert rock Pokemon here. Okay. Right, which we all I, which we all know off the top of our heads. I was just gonna um, iterate on their premise of just like there'd probably be a Detective Morpico movie instead of what actually happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. What about, what about Mimikyu, the Pokemon that literally mimics Pikachu? That's gonna be weird because Pikachu's not introduced for like another like ten years at that point. Honestly, that's kind so of he awesome. was the original. Like <laughs> we had this yeah. fun gag for eight years that you that, and then it finally popped up and it's like holy shit, that's the one. He's that a chubby rat. Cool. <laughs> I do want to quickly go back to Nathan and his infinite box of treasures that he keeps beside him. I think well, if you look at the questions ahead had, of time, you can like go and get. Props. I love that you have props. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> makes for a good audio experience for those people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah just know there's a bonus thing happening. Maybe check um, out the best video. I got is every you know three episodes I bring up this Game Boy Micro that I have on my desk, but that's the same one over and over again. That ha that does get brought up more than you would think, too, actually. Yeah. Not as much so, as the as the Catherine boxers. No, that got brought up last week. Still, like weird, legitimately. Yeah. <laughs> so another good point is Eevee isn't at the start either, so we get all of the evolutions for it. Oh, that's super weird. Dripped in piecemeal. Oh, weird. <laughs> hmm. Uh, my life doesn't change oh, yeah. at all. Okay. I, I was hoping this would like somehow mm -hmm. impact Nintendo in a very positive way because it would be so much weirder earlier and they would make more money during the Pokemon craze. And then Yamauchi could have bought the Seattle Supersonics and kept them in Seattle. Or would people uh, that... hate them more because they're like, this is only Gen 2 and they have a trash Pokemon? Like, yeah, Jesus, like... they're already <laughs> ran out of ideas. <laughs> introducing, like, oh, you think they would have like exhausted their like goodwill earlier because it's dumber ideas <laughs> why, why do all these ideas look like european pokemon but why are we in japan <laughs> yeah exactly mm. but so then there's the question be like why are these pokemon getting like more basic in their design yeah <laughs> also and, that. And, and then nintendo's trying to be like but you don't get it like it's more streamlined like it, this is the way it should be they're, they're getting better the designs are actually getting better more pure it's just it's basically just a like what is that animal side up I don't so know. Seal, platypus, seals, Robin, chat. Yeah. Why are they turning into animals that exist? Ekans. <laughs> yeah. What's up with Ekans? It's just snake backwards. Oh shit! It's snake backwards. <laughs> that would probably be yeah. like they're fucking run out of ideas. These yeah, you're right. Yeah. Writers, they just put snake backwards. These idiots. You're right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I retract it. it. Nothing changes. They've always been weird <laughs> about that. Yeah, I had to I look up Morpico for this. It actually wouldn't. Detective would work. We just put a Detective hat on that Morpico? thing. Yeah. yeah. Like you, like Ryan Reynolds' voice would come out of that. Yeah. I'd yeah. still watch yeah. that. 
I don't know who he's hanging out with, though. I guess that well, happened pretty late in the evolution. In, so it would probably be mostly the same. You guys know what a cin- cinder race is? Yeah. That yeah, idea. that's the, the rabbit. Soccer rabbit. Okay. Nathan, did you know that? No, I, I don't know so much about Pokemon. <laughs> has a bewildering premise um that's gonna do it for questions this week again if you want to send in questions for the show it's top down perspective at gmail.com at tdp podcast on twitter the discord channel or john's p.o box it's your game of the week um see you thieves why not yeah kirby it's the last week that it can get it and it deserves it Probably KOTOR 2 for this week, despite its wonkiness. It's still okay. pretty engaging. Good In starter name, dungeon. Stanley Parable for me. Yeah. Um, some things to look forward to. Secret of Monkey Island is this month's TDP Plus game. Uh, so look forward to that at the end of the month. And if you are a TVP uh, listener, uh, we did a Severance episode over the weekend, and that's live that you can check out. And our next episode, uh, which will be... Two weeks in from two now? Mondays from now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll be on the new Doctor Strange movie. Uh, Nathan, thanks for joining us. What do you got going on? Oh, we're doing uh, Will Ferrell movies over on our show. Do you love Will Ferrell, everybody here? Like Anchorman? Fan? Uh, not Anchorman. It was too oh, Anchorman big too. and popular. Yeah, so we did Blades of Glory. <laughs> oh, <laughs> skating wow. movie. Yeah. Wow. Um, kicking and Screaming? We did do Kicking and Screaming. We got an episode up for that. He's a soccer dad. We didn't go as far back as old school. We we have Bewitched on there, though. Which, uh, oh my God. Step Brothers? Uh, I don't think we're going to include Step Brothers this time around. It's too popular also. What's the one with Emma Thompson uh, with fiction? Stranger Than Fiction? Stranger Than Fiction was brought up, but instead we're going with Everything Must Go for our sad Will Ferrell movie. I don't know Uh, that one. I know he's he's got to sell all his stuff because he had a messy divorce. It's it's gonna be real fun. <laughs> so is, that home? is that is that the one with Mark Wahlberg? Uh, that is and, a that is with Mark Gibson, Wahlberg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I shot that, that one, one down actually. My friend wanted to do that one. Are you doing Daddy's Home like, too? I think we're doing the other guys for the Mark Wahlberg team. Other up. guy, other guys is pretty good. Yeah, aim for the bushes. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that's my favorite gag in that movie. So I look forward <laughs> to talking about. It. But yeah, our, our show's. <laughs> The movie starts so good, and then I feel like it just gets worse. Well, I feel it peaked like, right minutes. there, and yeah. then it's like, yeah. well, the rest of this is fine, I guess, but that was the funniest thing you did, <laughs> so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. Uh, but yeah, OK Video is the show. We're on the podcast platforms now, so if anyone wants to tune into that, all of these things will happen. <laughs> so semi pros coming up soon. The basketball movie. Basketball Because uh, the okay. playoffs are going on right now, so... Right. Seattle Supersonic. Yeah. Just bringing it up whenever I can. Hey, thanks for being on the show, Nathan. Thank you. Thanks for being on the show, Paul and John. Hey, thanks, man. And, no yeah. and you. Thanks for yeah, hosting, thank Sean. Thank you. And viewers, yeah, thanks like for you. putting together a show, Sean. That's fine. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Zombrex pen. Never you Zombrex, uh, the only drug you need. All right. COVID. Well, since, since Nathan's doing it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Do you have a Zombrex pen? Stuff? No, I have the Dead Rising 3 Chainsaw oh, Sledgehammer shit. pen. Oh, awesome. Hold on. It's a good okay. combo weapon. Yeah, you, you take the chainsaw off, and then it's a pen. I have the Disney Infinity Drax figure. There you go. How the hell do you do this? Is it just a cap? What are you or trying to do? Just take it off. Oh, yeah, the, 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 saw, the whole saw is a cap. Oh. It's, I think it's supposed to twist. Sorry gotcha. for all the visual gags this week. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I've never written with it. Hold on. It, I mean, it's probably the ink's probably drawing that thing by now. Oh no, it has the. I mean, it's like, okay. Like we all stopped recording, it, right? This isn't. Here's no. Michelangelo it, as a Ninja Turtle. It has the like wax tip on it, it to keep Power it Ranger. safe. This is a collector's item. This will still work. Michelangelo, the, at the Ninja Turtle as a Power Ranger. Yeah. That so happened? there's a there's a comic book series where the Ninja Turtles became Power Rangers. April's the Pink Ranger. Mikey's the Yellow One. And yeah, like it's just like a whole weird crossover thing. Okay. We should not just keep showing stuff. We should go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. See you guys Bye. next week.